This is uh, HRT 125, Plants and Society. We are discussing Unit 10, Materials, Cloth, Paper, and Wood. When we think back about plants and their use of clothing, uh, the use as structures, We're now starting to think about being organic. We're starting to think about using the plants in their natural conditions. Uh, don't modify them. And as you open up the newspaper, as you open up the internet, you'll see more and more uh, advertisements uh, for natural types of plants, natural types of woods. Uh, now this has been going on for years and years. When we think back of the years ago, how we utilize plants, because uh, we use them for more than food and drink. They can clothe us. Uh, they can keep us warm. Uh, they can shelter us by building houses. Uh, we can save our history by writing down on paper. We can use rope to help us haul things, uh, to protect things. So plants do furnish us society a lot more. And humans have learned throughout the years different techniques to take these plants and utilize them for other things other than food. We've learned that uh, some fibers are built on top of the plant. Some fibers are taken from inside the plant. And People throughout the ages have learned different techniques to do this. Um, the Chinese years ago uh, discovered that you could stand on plants using your weight. You could take stones and push the soft fibers off. You could take sticks and beat them. Uh, each a different plant, each a different way to get what we want for them. Early on, uh, Plants uh, were used for food. Plants were also used for clothing. One of our earliest inventions was on the sewing needle. When you think about this, uh, how did humans at the time learn to take the skins from animals and wear them as clothing? How did they learn to keep the pieces of skin together? Well, it was because of a plant. Uh, they discovered that they could take the sharp tip of a plant and make a needle out of it and bring these two hides together and have different clothing. They learned uh, years before the sewing needle that they could make string by taking the different fibers of the plants and folding them together or twisting them together and we can make string or rope. Combine the two together, we can make clothing. And the clothing together uh, could allow us to explore different parts of the world. We now could go further north. We could go hunting further north. Um, there's plants like the agave plant. Uh, it's the plant that you make the tequila out of. You can take that and take the sharp tips, make a needle. You can take the fibers from the leaves and take off the soft part and make a thread. Uh, people learned that you can take these fibers, twist them together. If you twisted them together, you can get rope. You could get a longer piece of fiber by twisting them together, relying upon their surface tension to hold them together. The spinning wheel was invented. Uh, this allowed us then to take those fibers, twist them together, and make long rolls of yarn, uh, long rolls of string, so that this could be utilized to make other types of clothing. Well, people learned early on that you could take these fibers and twist them together, plate them together, and you can make a basket. That basket then allowed you to um, harvest corn, beans, um, put them in the basket and carry them someplace. You could take this uh, on your fishing expeditions and the fish that you catch, you could put in here. 
Uh, not only could you store things in here, you could also use it to keep things off the floor. Um, it's, it's harder to find these because since they were made of plant, uh, they do de degrade over the years. But again, we find them um, uh, certainly a thousand years uh, before Christ. People learned that uh, not only do animals have fibers, that plants have fibers too. Some are hard, some are soft. As a man started to gather together, uh, they learned they had to share things. And as they were sharing things, uh, baskets were easy to share. Different techniques were developed by each uh, group, uh, whether it was plating or twining or coiling, uh, in the three different areas. Each type of community did it different. Uh, for example, you used the grasses a lot more in the northern climates. Uh, you used uh, larger leaves in the southern climates. Plants were used for other things besides uh, clothing, besides for making baskets. Uh, we could use them for musical instruments. Um, the bamboo or the arandodonics could be used to make flutes. Um, since they were hollow, they could punch different holes in there, and by blowing through it, you make different musical tunes. Uh, this lifted up people's spirits at the times. So. One of the first plants that has been used for our uh, clothing has been cotton. We have found archaeologically fibers in Mexico from at least 7,000 years ago. Uh, it, it seems that uh, two different types of cotton have been found, one that originated in India and the other in uh, South America. If you look here, you can see these white things in the pictures, and these are uh, masses about uh, you know half the size of your fist, and they are filled with the fibers, as well as hundreds of seeds. And throughout the years, uh, cotton has been utilized, but cotton also requires a large number of people just to get the seeds out of the fibers. Uh, different techniques were used. Uh, they learned that they could uh, scrape it with different like combs. Uh, they learned that they could take it and beat it on the ground. But unfortunately, most of it involved human labor uh, of actually picking the seeds out one by one. Uh, at first, uh, they thought cotton was uh, very similar to wool uh, and if it was like wool it should be actually from animals the animals happened to pass on by these trees and was escaped off uh, early on the biggest production of cotton was actually in india cotton may be one of the plants that changed the world there was a huge demand for cotton uh, cotton made some of the best clothing there was. Cotton was good because you could dye it different colors. Uh, cotton was good because it lasted. Cotton was good because it was warm. And because of all this, uh, England wanted the cotton. And England realized that if they could find a way to mechanize the production of this cotton and otherwise how do you take the fibers and make them into clothing uh, they could become rich uh, this may have been the start of the industrial revolution that in england uh, they used the streams to for water power they used water also for steam power to drive huge machines that would make all sorts of cotton uh, fabrics India at the time was growing most of the cotton. Um, India, however, didn't want to give away uh, this cotton. So what happened was a huge trading combine was developed 
where silver from the Americas was utilized to trade for this cotton. This disturbed England, and England wanted to have a better use of the cotton, so they developed the opium trade. This then forced uh, uh, India to trade uh, for their cotton. This led to several wars at the time to force uh, India to give their cotton to uh, England. Um, treaties were then developed, uh, forcing the uh, Indian subcontinent to not take the cotton and develop it into a textile, not into a fabric. Uh, this cotton had to be transported to England, where in their huge mills, the new fabric was made. This then was shipped to the rest of the world, allowing England to become a huge naval power at the time. Now this is a, a high power magnification of the cotton, and you see that the fibers are all twisted among themselves. Um, the fibers are actually hollow, so that as you twist them together, there's a large amount of surface area which adheres to the surface area of the next fiber. So as you twist them, uh, the, the rope or the yarn can be uh, longer and longer and become stronger and stronger. Because they're hollow, they would accept colors. So now to satisfy the world, different dyes could be developed to allow the uh, to be in more vibrant colors. Cotton was the king at the time. It was the crop of the United States. It was the crop of the United States. Uh, before this, it had been tobacco. But cotton was much easier to grow. Uh, cotton, vast tracts of land could be uh, taken over by cotton. Uh, the southern parts of the United States supplied 75% of the world's cotton. And at that time, it was hand-picked and it was hand separating out the seeds. The cotton gin was developed. The cotton gin made the crop even more important. The cotton gin involved a device that was turned and it had different uh, saw teeth on it which allowed the seeds to be picked out. Now all of a sudden, instead of taking 10 men uh, in one day to do a bale of cotton, one person could do several bales a day. And so consequently, the use of cotton throughout the world grew and grew. Uh, this helped England, and the England's massive industrial revolution continued with this use of cotton. Now that could be shipped from the United States. Uh, when the war be between the states uh, continued, England, of course, wanted to be on the side of the South because that's where they got their cotton and allowed them to be dominant throughout the world. Cotton um, has been used in many different forms since then. Um, a new technique was involved to treat the, the cotton with um, sodium hydroxide. It has the sodium hydroxide, which was sort of a very basic uh, chemical, uh, this allowed the, uh, the hollow cotton fibers to open up more. And as they opened up more, they would accept dye, and so you could have better colors. And uh, it was easier to, do, to dye, and also the fibers became stronger. Uh, most of the world now, we have uh, cotton growing with the use of uh, pesticides. Uh, one of the huge problems uh, with cotton was um, an insect called the boll weevil. And the boll weevil could decimate a crop very quickly. Um, chemicals were utilized to control this. And however, a effective chemical was not utilized until uh, late in the 1950s. What has happened, of course, is that in our search for sustainability, we have now tried to grow cotton uh, without the use of all these chemicals. 
uh, we've learned that we can attempt the bow weevil with pheromones. So if we can move the bow weevil into just a small area, it's much easier to kill them. And consequently, we have a much better uh, use of cotton. We have changed cotton. Uh, just like in the last unit, you saw how we changed corn. Cotton has been changed. Because of the boll weevil, we've had to use a large amount of pesticides. However, again, by changing the DNA structure, we can change the cotton. So all of a sudden, it becomes cheaper to grow. Now we're not having to use thousands of dollars worth of pesticides. We can use 80% less pesticide than RNA cotton. The U.S. cotton crop in 2003 was 73% genetically modified.